So today's lesson is uh, slope as rate of change, and we'll just quickly look at the lesson expectations for today. So by the end of this lesson, you should know that uh, slope, uh, rather understand slope in terms of rate of change. So slope is just rate of change in uh, these contextual questions. Uh, understand how units are expressed and how they relate uh, to the rate of change. Calculate slope using m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and interpret the slope of the graph as rate of change. Okay, so let's just get right into the lesson. Recall that the slope of the line is the measure of how steep the line is. So if the line is quite steep, it's going to have a very big slope. If the line is not very steep, it's going to have a small slope. Rate of change is the change in one quantity relative to the change in another quantity. A rate of change requires units, such as meters per second or dollars per hour. So recall that sometimes when we go to calculate slope, okay, which is the same thing as rate of change, when we sometimes go to calculate slope, we have to put in the units. And a lot of people um, have uh, made that mistake in the past. They'll go to calculate slope in these, um, uh, in these like uh, problem solving questions, and then they forget to put in the units. Okay, so let's take a look at the first example. Uh, an aircraft flies to an altitude of 1400 meters in six seconds. What is the rate of change of altitude? Okay, so we look at the rate, and the rate is equal to the change in altitude over, right, change in altitude over change in time. Okay, so you can uh, like abbreviate that mathematically using delta, which means change. Okay, So this delta symbol means change or difference in. Okay, change in altitude over change in time. Okay, and so we have uh, what we need to substitute in this question. Well, how much is the rate, uh, the plane's change of altitude? It says right here changes 1400 meters and what's the change in time six seconds so therefore the slope or the rate of change is 233.3 and remember that we have to include units because this question has context or this is a problem solving question so I can't just say 233.3 the rate is the, uh, the plane is rising 233.3 meters per every one second is the rate of change. Okay, let's take a look at example two. Eric can chew 128 times in four minutes. What is the rate of change for the number of chews? So, uh, we just want to look at um, how much can Eric chew perhaps per minute, right? So we look at the rate. Remember, it's going to be um, a rate of, you know, a change in something over a change in time. So we look right here. So we could say like delta chews, how many chews can Eric get in, in how much time? Okay, as you can see right here, very similar to slope, right? Change in y over change in x. Change in dependent over change in independent. So the change in choose is 128 times. And the change in time is 4 seconds. So then we end up with a final answer of 32 choos. Oh, I think I made a mistake here. It shouldn't be seconds. It should be uh, minutes. Just uh, Let's adjust that right there. Apologies. I mean, that would be pretty fast, right? 128 times per 4 seconds, so... Okay, there we go. 128 times for four minutes. Uh, so then 32 chews per minute. Okay, so therefore, Eric's rate of chews is 32 chews per minute, right? Or 32 chews per every one minute. I'm not writing a one here, but we know that a one is there. Okay, so we're going to look at slope now in terms of just a graph, right? Now, as we look at this right here, we can see this is just y and this is x. There is no context here. So this isn't like, for example, altitude, 
per second or choose per minute. So when we go to calculate the slope, there are going to be no units because there are no units on this graph. But remember that when we calculate the rate of change in another question, there has to be um, units. Okay. So recall we've said before that slope is the rise over run, and rise is the change in y, and run is the change in x. So remember what I said that delta represents that symbol delta means change or difference in y, difference in x. And if you look at that word difference, you may recall that difference means subtraction. So delta y is just y2 minus y1. Delta x is x2 minus x1. So these right here, these are like your three formulas for slope. And you'll see that as we progress into the further units, this is really the equation that we're going to be using mostly to calculate slope. Okay, So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, that represents delta y. So delta y represents the change in y. So therefore, y2 minus y1, and that is your rise over the change in x. So x2 minus x1, okay? And that is your run. So I just want to be very careful here because um, I'm going to show you an example, uh, something that students often do here. Let me just get rid of this right here. Uh, something that students often do is, um, sorry, put that back right there, okay. That looks a little better. Okay, sorry. Uh, when you uh, uh, are putting y2 minus y1, a lot of students will do this, y2 minus y1. And let's put a big x through that, and let's write, careful. This right here means exponents. What we want to write is we want to write subscripts. This means y squared minus y to the power of 1, which is wrong. We want the second y value minus the first y value. So we have to write it this way. If you write it this way, it's considered incorrect. And unfortunately, if you do that on an assessment, um, you will lose marks. So please be careful. That's why I'm giving you this note here. Make sure that they are subscripts. Okay, we're going to flip to the next page. Looking at the next example, an aircraft flying at an altitude of 7,800 meters is instructed to climb to 9,200 meters. The graph shows the relationship between the average altitude of the aircraft, so as we can see here, altitude is on the y, versus time. Dependent, independent. Remember, usually uh, time is the independent variable. Uh, notice there's a little squiggle here. There had to be a break in the graph here so that we could uh, properly uh, graph this. Otherwise, you know, these values would be too high on the graph. So we just put a little break in the graph here just to show that it's starting at 7,800. And look, it's going up. Each box is 200. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we are going to um, find two points on the graph to calculate the slope, right? So this is slope. So I need to find m. And remember that the new formula for m is delta y over delta x, which is y2 subscript minus y1 subscript over x2 minus x1. So this requires, so you need two points. Okay, so let's pick two points on this line. Um, so how about we pick... This one is an easy one to pick right here because we know exactly what it is. Okay, This is 0, 7,800. And then we can pick another point on the line. And it actually can be any point on the graph because it's a line. So they're gonna, this, um, you know, it doesn't matter what point you pick. It's always going to generate the same slope because this line has one possible slope. So let's pick another point that's very easy, and 
this one should be good to do because look, we know that this the value of this is two. So we know the x value is two and then we can just go across right here and find what the y value is. And it's not given to us here, but we can see that each box goes up by 200. So this should be 8,200. And now we have our two y values and we have our two x values. So let's, not make, let's make sure we don't mix them up. So let's go y2 minus y1. 8,200 minus uh, y1, 7,800, all over x2, 2, minus 0. So let's just look at what we wrote here. y2, that value, x2, this value. So y2 and x2 are right here. y1 and x1, y1, x1. Okay. So we effectively have, as we can see, rise over run. And we end up with 400 over 2. Now one thing that I am forgetting here and I haven't put in is because this is a problem solving question, this question has context. And so what are the units? Well, what are the y units? We'll take a look. Oh, okay. It looks they're meters. All right. Looks like they're meters. So we put them there. And then we look at the x. x is time and that's in minutes. So this is 400 meters for every two minutes. And that is a fraction that I can simplify to um, 200 meters for every minute. So therefore, the rate of change, is m, is equal to 200 meters per minute. Well, look at the next question. It says, interpret the slope as a rate of change. So this means, therefore, the aircraft's altitude is increasing at a rate of so 200 meters per minute next the graph shows the relationship between the height of a parachutist in meters and the time of descent in seconds so we have to calculate the rate of change here and again Rate of change just means on this graph, we're just looking for the slope of the graph, right? So, we'll, again, we'll put our equation, m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and then we have to pick two points on the graph. All right, so let me pick two points on the graph here. I'm gonna go this one right here, because that's very easy to read. Zero, 600, and um, yeah, I mean, I can pick any of these points here. So I'm just going to pick one at random. I'm just going to say this one right here, which is 80 and across 200. So now that I have my two points, I can calculate slope. So m is equal to y2, 200, minus 600, all over 80. Um, sorry, it shouldn't be a comma, that should be subtraction, minus that, so zero. Okay, since this question has context, what do I need to put in? My units. So, let's calculate that. That's negative 400 all over 80 meters per minute. And again, you can see that that is uh, something we can uh, simplify. So I can cross off my zeros and negative uh, 40 divided by eight. Well, negative 40 divided by eight, that's just negative five meters for every minute. I suppose the question here that you have to ask yourself is though, you know, why are we getting a negative value? You know, in the previous question, we had a positive value. We had the aircraft's altitude at increasing at 200 meters per minute. So why is this one, though, negative? It's the right answer. Let's go back to the context of the question. The graph shows the relationship between the height of a parachutist in meters and the time of descent in seconds. 
So this means that the parachute is act the parachutist rather is actually coming down. So the rate of his or her change is negative uh, five meters per minute. So that means that the parachutist the parachutist's height is, and what we can say is decreasing. And if we say decreasing, we are already implying the negative. So the parachutist height is decreasing at a rate of 5 meters per minute. Now if you want to get kind of clever, you could actually have said, you know, um, his, her, or their height is increasing at a rate of negative 5 meters per minute, but that's just overcomplicating it, right? Um, so we put the parachutist height, his, her, or their height is decreasing at a rate of 5 meters per minute, okay? Um, and if you were, however, be careful, if you were to write the parachutist height is decreasing at a rate of negative 5 meters per minute, that would be wrong because that is a double negative, right? So decreasing at a rate of 5 meters per minute. Okay, good. Now, last example here. Find the slope of the line passing through the given points. So we have A and B, and we have C and D. We have the two points. Okay. So what we can do here is we can do M is equal to Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. And I'm going to double check. Did I write these as exponents or did I write these as subscripts? Well, I definitely wrote them as uh, subscripts, so we're okay. Please uh, do not write them as exponents because that would be incorrect. And then we go on. Okay, so I'm going to choose this as my second point. So my y value there is 8, and my x value there is 6, and then my y value there is 1, my x value is 2. Okay, so then I end up with 8 minus, se uh, sorry, 8 minus 1 is 7, uh, 6 minus 2 is 4, and therefore the slope is 7 over 4. Therefore, m is equal to 7 over 4. In a units, no, because this right here, they're just two points on a line. There's no context to this question, so I don't have to put in any units. All right, let's look at this next one. This next one's a little different because we've got some negative numbers, so how are we going to deal with those? Pretty straightforward, just like we did at the beginning of the year. y2 is negative 1 minus y1, which is 4. x2 is 3 minus x1, which is negative 5. So we can probably see what's going to happen here in the denominator. So negative 1 minus 4, well that's minus 5, and then this would just become 3 plus 5, so we would have negative 5 over 8. So therefore the slope is equal to negative 5 over 8. Again, no units because there is no context to this question. Right, uh, your homework is listed here. Uh, these correspond to the um, uh, uh, questions that you have on your uh, in your textbook and in your uh, homework package. Okay, great. Thanks for watching.